feel possible absolute truth. If you take a source of light and you shine a beam from point A to point B and you measure it along its course of travel, you come up with a speed of 186,000 miles per second. Remember Muhammad Ali? I don't really know much about boxing myself, but all the boxers I've ever seen seem to crouch like this, and they put their hands up in front of their faces, and they have their elbows in, in a posture of extreme defense. Not Muhammad Ali, he used to stand up straight. He kept his hands down here, he used to dance. He kept his head back and dodge and swing, relying entirely on his reflexes. He once said that he was so fast that he could switch off the bedroom light by the door and be in the bed before the room got dark. We can't attest to the absoluteness of that particular trip. If you measure it across its course of travel, what do you think you get? Any ideas? 186,000 miles per second. If you measure it in the opposite direction, what do you think you get then? Yes the same. However you measure it, wherever you happen to be standing in the known universe, in whatever direction you or it happens to be moving, the speed of light is always the same. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Doesn't it strike you that there's something unnaturally absolute about that? In the Church of the Eternal Question, we reckon that this is about as absolute as you can get. And we reckon that the very paucity of absolutes tends to suggest that this fact must have some extra special meaning. And not just for us, but for any other intelligent life there may be out there in the universe. And so, there's our possible absolute truth. Here's our possible absolute clue. I have never had much respect for the mighty chicken. It is a bird. It has wings, and yet, it does not fly. If I had wings, you could be damn sure I wouldn't be here now wasting your time. I'd be out there flying around all day, every day. I'd be swooping and soaring like a swallow or a seagull. I'd be looking down on things. I'd be skimming the surface of the water. I'd be doing loop-the-loops and victory goals. I'd be flying till it got dark and I started bumping into things. My mother would have to keep calling me to come in. Barry, Barry! But I don't. I can't. We can't. But I do have. We do have. Consciousness. And with it, a certain amount of intelligence and imagination. Not to use these features, not to apply them to the fullest extent possible, seems to me a little chicken. <laughs> In the Church of the Eternal Question, we reckon one can conclude from the existence of intelligence that its purpose is to seek application. That is to say, the purpose of intelligence is... To think. To inquire. To imagine. To be curious. To seek solutions to problems. To fly. <laughs> the fact that I have a brain suggests to me that I'm here to apply it. I'm here to learn, to explore, to make decisions, to make conceptual constructions, to contribute. And as I endeavour to apply my intelligence, I reckon I have to pay particular attention to the speed of light, because that seems to be the only absolute truth observable by us. In the Church of the Eternal Question, we reckon that the very coexistence of, on the one hand, the possible absolute truth, the speed of light, and on the other, the possible absolute clue, our intelligence, could in itself, that that coexistence could in itself be a further or second. <laughs>